All right, so I'm doing this quickie tutorial on how to use IEM plugins to do an ambisonic mix for delivery to use with a 360 video. Um, starting off with my wave files, as you can see here, here's my multi track session, which is going to end up uh, on ambisonic. So I'm creating two, uh, two tracks. One is going to be my ambisonic's master bus. And one is going to be my 3D monitor bus, so I can monitor binaurally. All of these audio tracks have to feed this Ambisonics Master, and this Ambisonics Master has to feed the 3D monitor, which will feed the Master. So the only thing I'll be listening to is this. However, I'll be delivering this. So let's get started. Go into my routing window, taking everything but the 3D monitor out of the master bus. Uh, one thing we have to do is we have to make all of these tracks 16 channels because we're dealing with higher order ambisonics. So I go to my routing and I'm making that 16, 16, 16. I'm sure there's a way to have done this easily starting off, but I always end up having to do it this way. Anyway. Alright, coming down to the last three. And of course, I'm going to save this just in case this crashes on me. All right, so we're using the IEM plugin suite, just so you remember. But first, let's get our routing down. So my Ambisonics Master is going to feed my 3D monitor. And I'm going to make that 16 channels to 16 channels. And then I'm going to drag and drop that down across my audio tracks. And you can see it's 16 channels to 16 channels. So my audio tracks are feeding my Ambisonics Master. My Ambisonics Master is feeding my 3D monitor. And my 3D monitor is feeding my master output, which, of course, is coming out over my headphones here. Now... I have to put the plugins on the audio track, which is the ambisonic panner of the IEM suite. So let me get to the effects here. I'm going to search for an IEM under all plugins. And I'm looking for the multi encoder here. And right now it's set for five inputs. This is a mono audio track. All these are mono except for these two. This one's ambisonic and this one's stereo, but the rest of them are all mono. So I have to change that to one input. And I'm actually just going to copy that across to all of my tracks here really quick. We'll deal with those two in a second. So, in, in theory, my ambisonic Fuma doesn't really doesn't need to be decoded in any way. However, since it was recorded Fuma, and IEM expects Ambix file order or channel order, I'm going to use the Rode plugin here to convert from Fuma. So my input here is Fuma. My output is going to be B format Ambix, and that'll make it able to just feed the ambisonic master bus as is. My height will get a multi-encoder, but then I have to change it to two inputs because it's a stereo track. So that's my audio tracks. I've put the ambisonic panner or the spatializer on each of those tracks. I'm going to save. I don't technically need anything on my ambisonic master, but I do like to put the, uh, the localization plug-in from IEM on that. There's also some loudness meters and stuff we could do, but 
at the very least, I like to be able to see using the energizer energy visualizer where my sources are coming from. So at least I can tell if um, if anything's way off. So that's going on my <clears throat> Ambisonics master. And then on my 3D monitor, I need to monitor this binaurally. So I'm going to use the binaural decoder here for my EM. And that's automatically taking third order Ambisonics since I'm using a 16 channel master bus and decoding it for headphones. If you want to get really fancy, you can pick your model here to uh, optimize the binaural filter. For me, the stock one actually works really well. All right. So now it just remains for me to pan these things where they belong. Um, so, for instance, my ambience front left was about 45 degrees off. Oh, let me undo that. My bad. <coughs> I'm going to use the... Uh, Encoder here, so that was about 45 degrees in that direction. And this is the front right, that was about 45 degrees in that direction. The rear surround was behind me, whatever that is, 135 degrees. And of course, the right surround is the other way. Nope, I did that wrong. This is the right surround. Right surround belongs on the right. I must have missed the left surround. Let's go to the left surround. That's 135 degrees. Right. So those are my four ambience tracks. I'll solo it up so you can hear it. I'm going to put my headphones on too so I can hear it. And this was a widely spaced horizontal array. Um, here's what it sounds like. Let's get to a spot where there's some music, right? I'm going to add some height to that. So here I'm moving over to my height channel. I'm just going to double check everything here, right? Rear and rear, good. So for my height channels, I get two channels because it's stereo. So this is my left, this is my right. So that's going to go over there. About 90 degrees out. And I could type it in. I'm just being a little bit lazy. Uh, but the point is to get the elevation. And again, the higher you elevate, the more mono this becomes, regardless of where you've panned it in the horizontal. Um, I'm about 60-something degrees up, which I've heard this session before so it that seems to be something that works well with the horizontal layer but let's see so. too much but all right so now my ambisonics should already give me the the spacing where things were so looking at the 360 camera the the soprano sax was right in front the alto was to the right and slightly behind you the tenor was to the left and slightly behind you and then the baritone was all the way 180 degrees back um, there's no panning to be done here. It is what it is, but I definitely hear alto on my right and tenor on my left, so... We'll use this as a bit of ambient glue to kind of pull things together. So then what remains is to pan my close mics here. So my soprano sax was right in front of me. If I want to, I can actually bring it down a little bit. It was uh, slightly below ear height as we're all of them. The baritone. Oh, sorry. That's the alto. What am I doing? The alto belongs over here somewhere. I forgot to drag these guys into order, right? So soprano I like to put here. Tenor I'm going to put over there. And then my barry will be behind me. So my tenor I'm going to pan off this way. Soprano's right in front. 
slightly below. Uh, alto over here, also slightly below. And then my Barry. Put him all the way behind. You know, put it slightly above. We'll just take a quick listen. And I can um, I can rotate this around to see if it if it actually matches. I'm not gonna do that today, but it there is another plugin which allows me to rotate the scene. Right, there's scene rotator, um, which would allow me to see how this will react as I actually turn it. So this is kind of checking. That's a way for that's a poor man's way for me to to figure out how this would actually react as a listener was turning this in their 360 video. It's just a way for me to to determine that. So I'm using scene rotator to to check that. So then I would mix it, obviously. And this isn't gonna be anything to listen to. It's just a quick, I'm just gonna throw faders up just so we get a balance. <laughs> Pull my levels back just a hair. Once I'm happy with my mix, it's time to render. So now I am monitoring through the binaural bus, but that's not what I want to render. I want to render the ambisonics bus. So when I go to render, I'm going to go Option Command R. I don't want to render the master mix. I want to render stem selected tracks. So you'll see that I've selected my master bus, my Ambisonics master bus here by clicking on it. That's what I'm going to render. Uh, if I did a time selection, I would do time selection, but I, I didn't select. I'm just going to render the entire project. Let's call this IEM third order Ambisonics. Now, if, um, if I know I'm putting this on YouTube, and let's say I don't have a converter of any kind. Um, so if you don't have Facebook 360 or anything to convert it, then I might just render this as first order ambisonics. I'll check this out. Um, normally, if I was rendering a third order file, I would come here to channels and I would type 16. But if I'm looking to short circuit that or shortcut that, I'm going to stay at 48 because that's what's recorded at. If I'm doing first order ambisonics for YouTube, I can just render it as four. So actually let me browse for the directory. I just realized I didn't I don't have a directory. This is where I'm going with it. And it should be I am first order ambisonics. Uh forty eight thousand, four channels. If I was going to Facebook, this would be a third order mix and it would be sixteen channels, but um Assuming that you can't use the Facebook 360 plugins, if you're doing it this way, so we'll um, we'll render it, and I'm making sure all four of these meters should be going off. If I'm only seeing two, that means I've done something wrong. It's an ambisonic mix; it should be at least four channels. If I had 16 channels, all 16 channels should be going off, and that's basically it. Um, when it comes to marrying the video, you can use FFmpeg as I demonstrated in class. Or if the reason you're doing this is because you couldn't get FFmpeg installed, you'll have to just send me the four-channel WAV file, and I'll join it to the video for you. So I'm going to save. I'm going to quit. And that's that. That's all there is to it. So I hope this is helpful, and I'll see you guys on Wednesday.